Hello, Sid Roth here with Mark Morosa. And Mark, uh, you're in Sacramento. We've had a couple of services, Sacramento, California. But before we do anything, I want to welcome our most important guest. His name is my friend who's now in heaven, uh, Catherine Kuhlman, used to say she was nothing unless the Holy Spirit came into the service. So, Holy Spirit, I ask you to be supernaturally natural. I ask you to flood everything that's discussed with your presence. I ask you that those that are viewing, this would be the most special day short of them coming to know Messiah of their life in Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Mark, you're in uh, Sacramento, California. You went there and you had a couple of services. It looks like you're in a hotel room there, are you? Yes, I am. Uh, Tell me briefly about the two services. Uh, And the thing that fascinated me is you said it was a Russian-Ukrainian congregation, and there were some refugees from the current conflict that's going on in Ukraine. Uh, But the thing that excited me about it, and tell me just a brief a bit, but uh, the woman, when she got the translation, understood what happened in the first service. Explain all that. Yeah, I just want to begin with saying I'm beyond honored to be on here. Uh, and uh, I believe, you know, the Lord has aligned everything in its perfect time. But yeah, I'm currently in Sacramento, California. We had these services and uh, it was a Slavic speaking church. So it was mixed with, uh, you know, Ukrainian and Russians together. Um, and, you know, we had the morning service. The morning service was more an English service, multicultural service. And one of the ladies was there that is from the second service. She's from the worship team. And um, she was testifying on the second service. So at the second service, we saw the power of God show up. Many people were healed. People were saved. Uh, people were set free. And, but at the end of the service, the lady testifies. And she says, I was here at the first service. And she says, oh, my brother here, he was speaking in English. And I have no idea what he said because she's a fluent Slavic speaking uh, female. And uh, so she didn't understand what I was saying when I was preaching in English. And the second service, we had a translator. But she says, I didn't understand what he said, but I felt the fire of God fill me. She said, I had pains in my leg, my lower leg. And she said, I had pains in my back for several months already. And it, it, it was it was hard. You know, it hurt her. And she said, when I was praying, even though she didn't know what I was saying, she felt the glory of God fill her and heal her from all the pain. And now she's testifying it at the second service with no pain. Absolutely. I, I, you know, uh, Mark, I have found many people that have gone through traumas have opened and then sell out to the Lord. It's almost like there's more room in them for the Holy Spirit to fill more void. And although you came from, of what I understand, a few generations of pastors, um, you had a challenge as a young man. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I grew up in a Christian family. My father was a pastor. Grandfather was a pastor. And now my father planted a church in Jacksonville, Florida, which is where I live. But when I was a young, young boy, I was 14 years old, he was crossing the street. He got hit by a car and he passed away. So I was just very upset, broken, hurt. Uh, you know, what kind of loving father would allow something like this to happen? And so I rebelled. I turned against God. I went in the world and tried to find satisfaction, try to find love, try to find, you know, fulfillment. And I tried the things of the world and I got lost in it. I got buried in it. And um, God pulled me out about nine and a half years ago and just completely changed my whole life around. You know, it's 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 funny how it seems like sometimes we feel like we're so far from him. We messed up so much. Um, you know, I really feel like there's even some people watching or going to watch this that they feel like they messed up and they did too much wrong that God can use them, you know, but I feel like it's like sometimes that the more we mess up, the more the love of God shows up over our life. And I'm the testimony of that. I feel like I messed up so much and I feel like 
I'm unworthy. I don't deserve, you know, to see the things that I see today. Yet the the Lord's favors on my life and the Lord's using my testimony, using the, the wrong things that I, I saw through my life. And he's using it as a testimony to set those very people free. Well, I'm going to tell those that are viewing right now, your passion for God, your first love for God is going to skyrocket as you hear this discussion. Uh, Mark, you went to, uh, uh, you were into, was it drugs, alcohol? Uh, um, why is it so many drug addicts that get set free sell out to God as much as they sold out to their imprisonment with drugs? Uh, I, I, I mean, in Israel, the best believers in Israel are the former drug addicts. It, uh, but, but Mark, tell me about you went to a friend's graduation. That's when it really started big time for you. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like we try to find fulfillment and we try to all these different stuff. And a lot of us, you know, who have been through alcohol, parties, drugs, we end up getting in a place where we never wanted to in the first place. And we get so like hooked the enemy lies deceives to us and and buries us and puts us in a pit you know and the moment that jesus sets us free we know what he took us out of therefore you know we're 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 fully in love we we fully owe our whole life to him as the bible says you know you're born again you're dead your old life is gone he he gives us a new nature and i feel like that's personally what happened to me my my old self, my old nature, it was completely gone. Yet the gifts and abilities that I had, he used that were there for the world, he uses now for the kingdom. Um, and so my story about, you know, as you said about my friend, uh, this was a, a, a young man that I actually uh, ended up selling drugs to. He overdosed. He ends up uh, disappearing. Little to come to find out is that the, the young man ends up giving his life to Jesus. So a few months later, I bump into him at a gas station and he tells me about a graduation where he's graduating and I saw something in him. You know, everybody that's in sin in the world, they don't like it. Everyone I ever talked with, you know, that would drink, that would party, that would do drugs. They did not like their lifestyle. They wanted out, you know, and it's a lot of times the, the enemy just puts chains on us and we're bondaged. And I, I personally, I wanted freedom. And when I saw him, I saw freedom on him, you know, and when he invited me to this graduation of this Bible school, I made it my effort to be there. And when I came to my surprise, he was actually testifying with the microphone to the graduation. There's about 1,500 people probably there. And as he was testifying, now I want you to understand, I grew up in a Christian family. I knew I knew, you know, about Jesus. He died for me, but I've never experienced the tangible power of God like I did that day. As he was testifying, the power of God filled me right where I was standing. I fell to my knees, weeping, crying out to God, giving my life to Jesus, knowing that this is the very thing that I've been searching for my entire life. Uh, Mark, for those that don't have a paradigm over the words you just said, what do you mean the power of God came on you? Be graphic. Yeah. Explain. Yeah, I would say, you know, the love, the peace, the joy, the happiness. I felt the tangible presence of something different. You know, uh, I was feeling goosebumps. I, I knew that this is what I was searching for. You know, uh, it's like you don't know till you've seen, you know, you don't know till you've tasted and I've tasted and I've seen that the Lord is good, that this, you know, when the Lord shows up in a, in a place, you know that you know that you know that he's there, you know. Um, and so that's what happened to me. It wasn't one of those things that like the Lord's there. It was like I knew that I knew that this is the truth. This is the light because where the light is, the darkness has to flee. And I knew that this was it. Well, I know what you're talking about, because coming from a traditional Jewish background until I was 30, the, and the way I describe it is it was a peace that I have never, ever experienced before. It was a peace that someone would give everything they have for. It was a peace 
that I went from being a mess in every area of my life, just as it appears you were uh, with me, though, it was sudden. Was it sudden with you? Uh, what do you mean by the sudden change. as in your whole, the, change. the change? I think for me, it was a it was a progressive change. It took some time. Uh, so this was 2012. So this was actually 10 years ago when this moment happened. Uh, and so then there was a process that I walked through that. Uh, you know, sanctification, slowly God started cutting things off and, and he started visiting me. He would visit me in my room. He would visit me as I'm driving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stop. What do you mean visit yeah. you? Did you hear him? Did you feel him? Did you see him? Yeah. What? Yeah. I, I felt him. I felt the tangible presence of God. Uh, like I've heard about it. I've never experienced it until after that moment, when I first experienced him there, he start. I started feeling him. I start feeling the peace. I start feeling the love, the joy. You know, when I'm when I'm weary, when I'm sad, when I'm weak, I would feel this peace come upon me, this joy come upon me. I'd feel goosebumps fill me. Every area of my body, goosebumps would fill me, and it would be like I'm floating in the sky. Well, okay. It begged. Now you've really begged a question <laughs> from me. Wherever you go, be it in a restaurant, not necessarily a church, what you were in in Sacramento, but be it a restaurant, uh, be it a movie, uh, be it standing in line somewhere, be it a department store, you carry the tangible presence that non-believers say, what is that I feel about you? How do you do this? What did you do to get that? Yeah, so I just abide. <laughs> I just, uh, what, what do you mean by abide? So I spend time with the Lord. You know, that's what separates us from any religion and anything else is that Jesus desires a relationship with you. And as the word of God says, you seek him in secret, he rewards you in public. I believe the reward in public is him showing up with you. You know, when you learn who he is in secret, then you can be more aware of him in public. And so because of the awareness I have towards him, wherever I am, wherever I go, I'm able to, to sense him. And in a sense, I'm because he's, he's there. He'll never leave you or forsake you, right? That's what the word of God says. But it's our awareness of him. And so as I'm aware of him, he shows up. And he, his tangible presence shows up, not just to me. It shows up in a service. The, the presence of God shows up. A lot of times people come up to me after service and they say, as you were preaching, I felt the power. I felt the presence. I felt the peace. I felt the goosebumps as you were preaching. That's why sometimes people, I see people weeping as I'm preaching. That's why people come to the altar. It's not because of my words or it's not because of who I am. It's because the presence of God shows up and people know the Lord is here and they they are prone to to really submit and prompt to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, you also operate in what is called words of knowledge. Uh, tell me about the girl that needed uh, surgery on an eye, or I don't even know if she could have ever seen. Yeah, so uh, a lot of times I do get uh, word of knowledge before a service, during a service, during the altar time, uh, the way I receive it sometimes is I'll feel a tangible presence on a certain area of my body. So in a case, I'll feel it in my back or I'll feel, I'll actually feel the pain of the person, what they're feeling. So I'll feel uh, like yesterday's service. I felt pain. Excuse me. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, the first time that started, did you think it was your pain or did you realize God was showing you something? Yeah, so it, it started happening uh, after I was at a service and I saw somebody else function in it. So they had an ear ringing and they said, I, I hear my ear ringing. I feel my ear ringing. There's somebody here at this service that has an ear issue. And I look at him and I said, God, I want that. And instantly... As I said that, I started feeling that same ear ring. And after that, I started feeling these, these tangible pain. It's not like pain where it's miserable, but it's like a second of the pain of the person that what they're feeling. So hmm. as I said, yesterday's service, I felt lower back pain. And I said, hey, there, is there uh, some people here with lower back pain? There was about 15, 20 people that came forward 
and were prayed for. Many of them, I can't say the exact number, but many of them, the, the Lord healed and removed that pain from their back. Uh, well, you were telling me at another service about a girl that uh, had almost like supernatural laser surgery on her eye. Yeah, so there was a there was a girl at a at a service actually in Sacramento, California, where I'm at now. But this was about four years ago, uh, where during the prayer, as we were praying, now it wasn't one of those prayers where you know I go through and I lay hands on people. It was one of those corporate prayers where uh, everybody was praying together. The the people kind of raised their hand. Hey, I have pain. So there was a girl at the service raised her hand and. Uh, she raised her hand because she couldn't see with one eye. But she said to me after service, she testified, said during the service, during the prayer, she said it was as if somebody was doing laser surgery on her eye. She said a physical flake pops out of her eye. And she said all of a sudden she could see. So I, actually, I was just at a service in Philadelphia. There was, a, there was also a young boy uh, that could not see with one eye from birth. He was about 12 years old. And from birth, he couldn't see. Uh, and I actually have a testimony recording of this where uh, he testifies with his mom and his mom testifies that he couldn't see from birth with his eye. And literally the Lord opens his eye at the service and he could see. And there's something that I know is going to be very helpful for people. You talk about, and most people can kind of envision, uh, you spend time with God, the secret place. That's what keeps you so filled with the Spirit, which is the presence of God. And uh, that's what non-believers are feeling. That's where the secret of the power of God radiates from you. Um, for someone that has never spent time in the secret place, could you just very briefly uh, give be a personal trainer yeah. and, and coach us? Come on, coach. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll go back and rewind a little bit of how it started for me so I can connect with the, some of the viewers so they can understand the, the starting part. The first things first is just start. You know, we feel like we need to understand everything or we need to expect him to show up a certain way. Listen, don't expect him to show up a certain way. Don't expect him to speak a certain way. Uh, just show up. You know, if we come to God for anything but God, we miss God. You know, sometimes we can come to God expecting to hear a loud voice, a heavens to open up, God to come down on a chair, and then he'll speak to us, and then we know it's God. But, like, if we come to him any other way, if we come to him and say, God, I, 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 I want you to do this, I want you to do that, we can miss him. And so as we just show up, and come to him for him, he'll show up. So for me, what happened for me? How did I start my personal relationship with the Lord? What, what do I mean about secret place? So for me, the way I started is I just started showing up. I started seeking him. I started saying, God, I just want to know you. But my main prayer, even when I stepped into, uh, say, ministry, was, God, I need your help. I need you. I need you. I didn't necessarily, you know, have a long you know, speech or long, long wording with the Lord. Literally my prayer, I would say for a year or two, which I thought was a weakness. I thought, you know, man, I'm so weak. Look at me. I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know what to tell God. But I was, I would say, God, I need you. Lord, I'm so dependent on you. I'm so desperate for you. And that would be my prayer. And you know what? He would always show up. And I really, would you, would, excuse me, yeah. would you, um, how long would you be still if he hadn't shown up? How long would you? Yeah, so it, it would vary. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, sh I'll wait for 10, 20 minutes. And sometimes he won't show. I won't feel him. Right, what what are yeah. you doing when you, those 10 or 20 minutes while you're waiting? What do you do? I, 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 most of the time, I focus my mind on him. I I. I disconnect from everything, all the noises, the distractions, the to-do list, you know, the, the prayer needs. I disconnect from all that. And I say, God, I'm, I'm focusing my mind on you. And I, I, I set my mind on Jesus. I set my mind on the cross. Sometimes I think about Jesus with the cross. I just picture Jesus on the cross. I just picture Jesus carrying the cross, but I set my mind on him. And I, in a sense, I posture myself. 
I posture myself like, here I am, Lord. I'm focused on you. I'm disconnecting from from everything else. And I'm making this moment about you. And I need you. I'm desperate for you. What would you say to someone that did what you said for three weeks and didn't hear anything, feel anything, or see anything? What would your advice be to them? I would say keep seeking because when you seek, you shall find. It's a it's a promise of God. It, when you seek the Father, He will show up. Uh, he will reveal Himself to you. Uh, you know, and it's not by what we feel. Sometimes we try to feel something, right? The Bible says we don't walk by, uh, you know, what we feel. It, it talks about how we walk. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith, right? We don't walk by what we see. We don't walk by what we smell, taste, touch. We don't walk by what we we hear. We walk by our faith. Faith is the things not seen yet hoped for. So it's walking, seeking after him, hoping, believing him to show up with faith, not not necessarily waiting on the feelings, not necessarily waiting for the glory or the tangible presence of God. Um, but because what can happen is you can show up in the secret place waiting for the goosebumps or you can show up in the secret place waiting for the peace and you're, you're limiting him and you're putting this boundary on him because he's beyond what we can. We'll, we'll search him our whole life on earth and in heaven. We'll still be figuring out for eternity who he is, you know? And so when we expect him to show up with goosebumps, we are limiting him. And I would say most of the time, sometimes he will, I can't say he won't, but most of the time when we limit him, he won't show up. That is really, really good advice. Um, There are people, I want you to pray for people's healing in a moment. And I believe there are going to be many people healed. And then I'd like you to to pray. Um, This will surprise a lot of people. You told me how important it is. It's one of the seven spirits of God. I want you to pray after the prayer of salvation for uh, the sp- an impartation of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? Yeah, fear of the Lord is to, to know him, understand him. I believe what fear of the Lord is to me personally is loving him so much that I don't want to sin. It's not, I'm so scared of him that I don't want to sin. It's, I love him so much. I love relationship with him. I love his presence so much that I, I don't want to sin. I, I, I believe that that's the fear is that I want relationship with him. And I know that if I do anything outside of, you know, say if I do sin, I know that that will disconnect me from him because sin, it leads us away from God. It, it pushes us away from God. Like Adam and Eve, they sin. They hid themselves from God. So uh, I, I love him. I want, I want to be with him. I want to seek him. And so therefore, I have fear of God, not because I'm scared of him, but because I want to maintain my relationship with him. Well, there are people viewing us right now in different categories. There are people that have lost their first love. They had it. But the world, circumstances, misunderstandings, they lost their first love. And then there are people that uh, have never had experiential knowledge of God. Uh, And there are people that aren't even sure they're going to go to heaven if they had just just had their last breath a second ago. Um, I want you to pray a prayer for people to know God, experience God, and to get their first love back. And you and might as well pray for an impartation of the Spirit of the Lord. That I, I think it's wonderful that you so honor God that you don't want to do anything to displease Him. I'm the same way. That's normal. Anything short of that is abnormal, according to the kingdom rules based on the kingdom book, the Bible. Uh, It's normal based on religious rules, on a seeker-sensitive environment. Lead us, teach for just a minute or two, that's all, 
And then I want you to lead us in a prayer. Yeah, I just want to say those that are watching this, that Jesus loves you so much. He's so proud of you. And I want to also say that he has such a mighty plan for you. And he wants to use you for his glory that he didn't just place you on this earth just to worship him. Although that's great. Uh, he didn't just place you here just to fellowship with him. Listen, he's got angels worshiping him for eternity. He's got all these different creatures worshiping and bowing down to him. Listen, he wants relationship with you, but not just that. He wants to fill you with his presence. He wants to fill you with his power. He wants to fill you with himself and he wants to use you for his glory. Listen, he gave his life for us, not just for us to go to heaven, but for heaven to come on the inside of us so we can be his vessels on this earth. And those of you that are watching, I might feel like you're too far from him. You might feel like you you haven't had a certain kind of spiritual, supernatural encounter. Therefore, God can't use you. Maybe you're on here and you feel like, again, you, you are incapable of being used by God. You, uh, you know, you're... You're just not the vessel that he can use. Listen, he wants to use you. Come on. Jesus lives inside of you. The same spirit rose Jesus out of the grave that Jesus wants to fill you and he wants to use you for his glory. And he's going to accomplish everything that he desires through your life by his spirit. So um, I want to pray for you right now watching this. I want to pray that the tangible presence of God fills you. I'm sure that as you were watching this, You've probably felt something different. You've probably felt at peace already. But I want to pray for you that he may uh, fill you and not just fill you while you're watching this, but fill you when you stop watching this. And as this replays in your mind, that he would he may visit you wherever you are in the marketplace, in the gas stations, getting a, a haircut at the barbershop. Uh, he can visit you there. You can have uh, the encounters with him there, but not just that, that he can use you as a vessel and set up appointments, divine appointments, uh, wherever you go, um, you know, in your jobs, in your workplace, he can use you at the gas station, whether it's just to tell somebody Jesus loves you, or it's to really share the gospel with them. Uh, and just to have that boldness to really step out. I want to pray for you now, right where you're at. Listen, if you love somebody, you want to tell everybody about them. I remember when I was lost, I wanted to take everybody to hell with me. But when I found the truth, I want to take everybody to heaven with me. Listen, when you know that you know that you know him, you want to tell everybody about him. You want to share the love that he's given you in the first place. And I want to pray that maybe you feel like you've gone too far from him to love you. Listen, he loves you so much and he wants to show you right now. Listen, it's, it seems like a lot of times the further we go away from him, the further, the more he shows his love to us. So may that be the case for you watching now in Jesus name. So Lord, I thank you for my brothers. I thank you for my sisters. I thank you for the family that is watching this now. Lord, I pray from the top of their head to the sole of their feet that you may visit them. God, that you may uh, just send them the peace that they long for, the joy, the satisfaction, the comfort. Lord, I know that you've placed us on this earth, God, with a void, but only you can fill that void. I know many have watched are watching this, God. They've tried different things and nothing satisfying because only you can fill that void. So, Father, I pray, fill them now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you mark them. I thank you that you love them so much, God. You sent your son down to die on the cross for them. And Father, I pray now that they may get the revelation and understanding of the love uh, that you have for them, even though they might be too far away from you, God, even though they might not be gifted enough for you, God, even though they might not feel worthy enough, God, I thank you that you've called them worthy. I thank you that you love them so much, God. They're fearfully and wonderfully made and they're placed on this earth for such a time as this. I thank you that you desire for heaven to come on the inside of them, God. I thank you that you desire to use them that you desire to fill them with your power, no matter how disqualified, how far away they might feel, God. Lord, that qualifies them even more, God. I think in their weakness, they are strong. So I pray, God, that you may give them the understanding, God, that you want to fill them, that you want to use them. And I pray that you use them in Jesus' name. I pray you fill them with the fear of the Lord, God, that they will want to fellowship with you and they will want a relationship with you god that the old man is fully gone we don't resurrect the old man god but we leave him in the grave that the new man can can walk over their life in jesus name lord i pray in the mighty name of jesus lord that they do not do this life on their own god i pray that the inner depth of their heart god is gripped by you in jesus name lord that they're hungry for you and they're after you lord i pray 
that you draw them. And I pray right now, God, anybody that's viewing that has a pain in their body, any kind of pain right now, before I even begin, I break every doubt in Jesus name, in Jesus name, every fear be gone. Now anxiety be gone. I declare faith in Jesus name. And Lord, I, I just pray that you release your angels over them in Jesus name. And right now all pain be gone. We take authority by the blood of Jesus and we command every headache, every neck pain, every back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, tooth pain, every eyesight, eye that might not be seen, be open now in Jesus' name. Right now, chest pain, breathing pain, uh, every uh, pain in the stomach right now, eating disorder, be gone right now. Uh, every hip pain, short leg grow in Jesus' name. Back pains, be gone, new discs, new joints, be formed. I release creative miracles now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this here. Come on, right where you're at, just test it. Move around, move your back, move your shoulder, and just thank Him. Say, thank you, Jesus. You might not even be praying right now with us. You might not even be believing right now. Some of you in this moment, you're feeling uh, you're feeling a heat over that pain. You're feeling a heat. I feel like there's somebody here right now. You're feeling heat over your knees. There's somebody you're feeling heat over your leg. Uh, and that is the presence of God. He's healing you now. Uh, maybe you're not feeling nothing. Listen, don't go by your feelings. Don't go by what you feel. Believe him for it right now. Some of you are going to leave this. You're going to stop watching this. You're going to realize my back pain is gone. My shoulder pain is gone. Some of you are feeling your leg grow out just a little bit. Right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you glory. Glory. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 One last word. This is a fact. There's a book in heaven. It's called the book of life. And your name is there and your whole life is there. And here's the truth. Everything in that book is good. Everything in that book you want to do. And it's only when you deviate from making Jesus your Lord and Savior and really reading the Bible. And I like the way you describe the quiet time you have. You seek God not for things, for who he is. What a paradigm shift. I pray that you take these words and you fulfill every good thing. It's not too late. Every good thing that God has for your life. In Yeshua's name, I seal this. Amen. Amen.